Hi, I'm James, and in today's video we have this, the Dell Inspiron 153511 on the desk, and we are going to be looking at the upgrade options for this laptop. So to get started, we're using our Philips O-size screwdriver, and we are going round and removing most of the screws from the base. We are not going to take the two corner back screws out, but we are going to remove the other seven from the base of the machine. With those removed, we can then turn our attention to the back corners, and these two are retained screws, so we are going to do them last. And basically, as we uh, undo the screw, it will stay in place, but begin to lift the back of the laptop up. So you can see in this corner, it has popped up. And looking at the other corner, we can see more clearly close up. As the screw lifts, the little uh, attachment around it then begins to pull up the base to create a gap for us to pry open the laptop with. So I find the best option then is to push the pry tool in in the corner of the hinge where it has started to open up. And from there, we can go along the back of the laptop to release the panel there before working our way down the sides. Um, you don't want to apply too much pressure here. It should um, be a case of just sort of going down and in and things should lift fairly easily and I choose to work down both sides. And then once the sides are released, move on to the front. The front, you really just want to press down and into the gap. And if it's the first time you're opening the laptop, uh, you may find there is a bit of resistance when you're pulling it up because there is a little internal metal clip which will be detached. Uh, in this case, I'd already taken the back off once and hadn't fully pushed that down. So make sure when you refit the base, you do clip that down into place by pressing in the center. With the laptop back removed and put to one side, we then want to just use the end of the pry tool to release the battery. And then we can see that we have options here. We have two DIMM modules running at DDR4-2666, a M2 slot, a 2.5 inch SATA slot, and an M2 wireless card. So looking first at the RAM, and as normal, these can be released with the two clips to the side. We can see that the four gig module fitted here is actually a DDR4-3200 module, However, it does only run at 2666 speed in these 3000 series laptops. So we are going to fit a second uh, 3200 module in there. Again, four gigabytes for a balanced memory configuration. We are then going to look at the M2 drive. And this has a M2 2230 drive as standard, in this case, 128 gigabytes. And this little shield to adapt to hold down that drive. So removing that, we can then pull out the SSD itself. And the mounting point for this is correctly positioned so we can fit a M2 2280 drive. Again, this is an MVME type drive. I do not know if SATA type drives are supported, but there's really not much reason to use those in place of an MVME drive. And screwing down the one terabyte drive, that is then ready to use. We also have the SATA uh, 2.5 inch, I believe it is uh, seven millimeter thick drive bay here. And we can use this to add a hard drive or second SSD to our device. There is only one M2 slot, so you can't add a second MVME SSD, but you can add a SATA 2.5 inch one. So with the four screws removed, the mounting bracket comes in the machine along with the cable. Very nice of Dell to continue to do this on their range of machines which have these bays present. And the bay includes the four mounting screws for the drive. So we're just going to fit one of our test SSDs into it. So we peel this tape off. With that done, we can then pop out the four screws from the plastic which holds them.
insert our SSD so that the SATA connector lines up with the uh, little cutout in the plastic below it. And then reinstall the four mounting screws into the drive. With the drive fitted into its holder, we can then place it back in the machine. So the first thing we need to do is peel up this tape holding the cable down. Try not to rip it like I did. Although if you are installing the drive and not keeping the tape, uh, then it's not the end of the world if you do, it just needs disposing of. We can then bring our drive into the bay. Connecting the SATA power and data before replacing it in the chassis and reinstalling the four screws. The wireless card included in the system is a PCIe type uh, Wi-Fi card and does include a 2x2 two two aerial, meaning we have both the main and aux aerial leads. And by simply removing the screw and lifting off the metal shield, we can then disconnect the two aerial leads just by lightly pulling them off and slot the Wi-Fi card out of the holder. To reinstall, uh, we then have to reconnect the aerials after inserting the card. And you may want to upgrade to something like a Intel AX210 uh, to give yourself um, Wi-Fi 6 support. Uh, the aerial leads are a little fiddly, uh, but really you just, it's just a case of lining them up and pressing down until they click into place. And then once you have reinstalling the single screw and the little metal cover over the aerial leads, Having done all this, we then just, before reassembling the machine completely, I fired it up and checked in the BIOS. And you can see here under memory, we have eight gigabytes of memory installed, the four gigabytes recognized in both uh, SODIMM slots, and it is in dual channel mode and DDR4 2667 megahertz. Likewise, looking under the SSD, you can see that the 240 gigabyte a SATA SSD is recognized as is the one terabyte M2. So with all that done and our upgrades made, we can reinsert our battery by pressing that securely into its holder and place on the back panel. We can then press down to firmly fit the back panel, making sure we go along the edges, but not pressing hard into the corners. Then screw in the two corners and make sure everything is clipped down securely. Before giving things a final press down to make sure all of the chassis is clipped together properly. And then get remembering to give a press in the center to make sure that center clip is in place and fitting the rest of the screws. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you have, do let me know by giving it a like or saying so in the comments. Hit subscribe if you'd like to see more videos as I post them. And thanks for watching.